So we are still under the topic of classification. Now, to explain classification of all living organisms, it means that we are putting all these organisms into specific groups. Now, why would we put them into groups? It's because it makes it easier for us to make us better understand their features, their common features. But again, you don't need to know that in detail. But here's the thing. We have so many different types of organisms on Earth. So how do we start off the process of classification? We will always split all living organisms on Earth into two big groups. The first big group is known as prokaryotes, and the second big group is known as eukaryotes. In AS chapter 1, we study that prokaryotes are organisms where the cells do not have nucleus and membrane-bound organelles, but eukaryotes are organisms with cells with nucleus and also membrane-bound organelles. And then under prokaryotes, after identifying as many different types of prokaryotes as possible, scientists realized that under prokaryotes, there are also two distinct groups. That is why they came up with the domain. So we have the three types of domains and under prokaryotes, we have two domains. So the first domain is referred to as the domain of bacteria and the second one is domain archaea. And you need to know the spelling as well, by the way. So what exactly is the domain bacteria and domain archaea? You've heard of bacteria before, but this might be the first time you've heard of archaea. In chapter 1, we studied peptidoglycan cell wall, 70 as ribosomes, no membrane-bound organelles. They have circular DNA, they have plasmids. But when they identify archaea, they realize that, hey, archaea, they kind of look like bacteria, but they also have distinct features as well. So that's why the prokaryote group is split into two domains. Domain is just a large group. And within eukaryotes, we all classify any organisms with a nucleus into an extremely large group known as domain eukarya. So we are going to look at all these three domains and compare their similarities and differences. I'm going to create a table over here. Domain bacteria, domain archaea, and domain eukarya. Presence of nucleus, I've mentioned it. Bacteria do not have nucleus. Archaea also do not have nucleus. But eukarya, any organisms that fall under this domain, will have nucleus in their cells. Bacteria, what type of DNA do they have? In chapter 1, we studied this. It's circular DNA with no histone proteins. Eukarya, the DNA in their nucleus will have linear type. They'll have linear type of DNA in their nucleus and the DNA is also looping around histone proteins. We mentioned this in chapter 1. Archaea is where it gets a little bit interesting because while the DNA is circular like bacteria, it has histone proteins like eukarya. So they have, so that's why some scientists are saying that archaea is sort of like the middle ground between the evolution billions of years ago from bacteria to eukaryotes. So we might think that that's why there is a sort of link that is happening there. Now, what about plasmids? Plasmids are small circular DNA in the cytoplasm usually. We talked about this. A bacterium will usually have one large circular DNA, referred to as the chromosomes, but they can have multiple small plasmids, which are small circular DNAs. They have multiple functions. We studied this in chapter 19 where they are used as vectors during genetic engineering. All right? Now, here's the thing. Bacteria have plasmids. Archaea have plasmids, but eukarya, any organisms under the domain eukarya, do not have plasmids. Membrane-bound organelles such as rough ER, smooth ER, mitochondria, chloroplasts, vacuole, uh, bacteria and archaea do not have them because they are extremely small, but eukarya, because their size is much bigger, they can accommodate these membrane-bound organelles like RF endoplasmic reticulum, smooth ones, mitochondria, chloroplasts, Golgi apparatus, uh, large permanent vacuole, vesicles, those kind of things. Now, here's where it becomes important too. Under the comparison of cell walls, bacteria will have a cell wall known as peptidoglycan cell walls. We covered this in chapter 1. Archaea will have cell walls too, but it's not peptidoglycan. You don't have to know the material in the exam. If they ask you to compare the cell walls of bacteria and archaea, you just have to say that bacteria have peptidoglycan cell walls, but archaea have non-peptidoglycan cell walls. That's it. For eukarya, only some eukaryotes will have cell walls. 
For example, plants, they have something known as the cellulose cell wall. The fungi, which falls under eukaryotes as well, they'll have something known as the chitin cell wall. All right, animal cells which fall under eukaryotes, domain eukarya, we don't have cell walls, by the way. Next, next one, uh, we have to also talk about their ribosomes. Let's compare the bacterial ribosome and the eukaryote ribosome first. In chapter 1 of AS, I told you that the bacterial ribosome is 70S, but the eukaryote ribosome is an 80S ribosome, by the way. And remember, the ribosomes are made up of two parts, the large subunit and the small subunit. Here's the thing. Archaea ribosomes are also 70S ribosomes in terms of their size and density, but the small subunit of the Archaea ribosome have more similarities to the eukaryotes ribosomes small subunit, which means to say the RNA, because rRNAs, ribosomal RNAs are required to make uh, the ribosome, the RNA here and the RNA here will have very similar base sequence. So for the exam, all you just have to mention is bacteria have 70S ribosomes, archaea have 70S ribosomes, eukarya, they have 70S ribosomes in mitochondria and chloroplasts. Yes, we know that. They have 80S ribosomes in their rough ER and cytoplasm. And the 70S ribosomes of the archaea have similar small subunits with the 80S ribosomes of the eukaryotes. That's it. So just, just know that the small subunits have more similarities. Next, cell division. How do they divide? Because bacteria and archaea do not have a nucleus, they cannot do mitosis. Mitosis is only for cells with nuclei or nucleus. Um, so they divide through a process known as binary fission, but eukarya, domain eukarya cells will divide by mitosis. So this is what we have to understand in terms of the comparison for the three domains. Another thing that I also want to add at the bottom here is their cell membrane. As a comparison of the cell surface membrane for bacteria, archaea, and eukarya, the bacteria and eukarya domains, their cell surface membranes, are comprised of something known as the phospholipid bilayers. We've talked about bilayers in chapter 4, but I'm just going to draw it out over here. You can see the two phospholipid layers. I'm drawing it out, and I'm also going to highlight it in different colors. As long as you can see those two different colors, that implies that these are the two layers that make up your the bacteria and eukarya cell surface membrane. The weird thing is, for archaea, they have a cell surface membrane, yes, but it's not a phospholipid bilayer. In reality, their phospholipid molecules are quite different, all right? If you want to go online and look at the structure, you may do so. You don't have to memorize the structure, like how it looks like, but you have to know that it's made up of something known as a phospholipid monolayer, where I'm drawing out one of the phospholipid molecules where you have the head, you have the tail, but at the end of the tail, it's connected to another head. So that's entirely one molecule. If you see the one at the top, those are two phospholipid molecules, but the one at the bottom here is one phospholipid molecule. And that phospholipid molecule will just the same as well. It will form a layer of the cell surface membrane, but we call this as a monolayer. So in the exam, please be aware that the organisms in the domain archaea, they will have a phospholipid monolayer as opposed to the phospholipid bilayer found in bacteria and also eukarya. So these are the differences that you must know about the organisms in all the three domains.